We have a wonderful assurance of salvation. The Apostle John said in our scripture reading tonight that uh, we may know that we have eternal life. Uh, many people, if you ask, are you a Christian? Are you going to heaven? They answer, well, I sure hope so. But, you know, we have an assurance. We need to know so. Uh, we need to know that if we're in the right place with God, that we have a home in heaven. Uh, our scripture reading, well, uh, it says, These things have I written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. It's important that we understand uh, who the Son of God is, that we believe that, uh, because God has given him the power on heaven and in heaven and on earth. All things are through Christ Jesus. So when we believe on the name of, of the Son of God, we believe on Jesus, and we do the things that he has set forth for us to do and commanded us to do, we ha can have all the knowledge of knowing that we have a place in heaven with him. Not that we hope so. Uh, now, on the other hand we hope we make it because we can choose or do things in the course of our life that would cause us to maybe miss it but uh, God has given us assurance that if we do what we're supposed to do we know that we have a home in heaven with him if a person doesn't know for sure that you have a home in heaven, then there's one of two things that is wrong. Either he or she's faith is weak or he or she's uh, life is faulty somewhere because we should know and we should certainly know if we uh, have salvation or not. To know about salvation, I think we must understand the gospel because the, the salvation comes from the word of God the gospel Romans 1 it's verse 16 and 17 it says for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also the Greek for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith surely we can understand that that principle but what does the believer do with the gospel um, one asks the question what is the gospel you know we, we have an entire bible here we have an entire book if you will of the words of god so what is referred to as the gospel well we have four books in the new testament that are referred to as the books of the gospel and in these four books if you want to sum it up, and I want to do that really, really quick, uh, the Gospels teach about the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So when we talk about the Gospel, it's important that we know the representation of the Gospel is the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. All, that's all we need to know and study to find out what we need to do uh, to become and know that and have assurance that we have a home in heaven. Now, we have the rest of the Bible to be understood and to, to know and to read to let us live our life by and to know what God expects of us. But salvation is within the gospel and the gospel is summed up as the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Those things, if they never happened, we would never have a hope or uh, any assurance of salvation. So without that, we would be lost. You know, and I say sometimes if we got what we deserve, it'd be bad uh, because we're all sinners and we're all deserving of, of far less than what God has given us through his love and through his mercy. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 through 4 says moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also you have received and wherein you stand but which also you are saved so people were not only 
preached to with the gospel during that early time, but they were saved by the preaching of the gospel. If you, excuse me, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, and unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So it's very important for us as Christians to understand the, the meaning of the gospel and what it stands for and what it really is. Uh, in John 8 and verse 24 it says, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins for if you believe not that I am he you shall die in your sins. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? And, and if you have a red letter edition in your Bible, you know that these are the words that Jesus spoke. Uh, if you believe not that I am He, you shall die in your sins. The Son of God. If you believe that Jesus is not the Son of God, if you uh, don't believe, or, and you don't believe that He died and was resurrected and now sits on the right hand of God, guess what? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to die in your sin. Uh, he wants us to do what He says. Over in verse 2 of John chapter 8, it says, If you die in your sins where I am, you cannot come. So, that sin separates us from God. Uh, the only way we can get rid of that sin is to be obedient to the gospel. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. There's a... Not a secret, but there's a promise here, he, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. There's a strategy there that Jesus wants us to understand that you know, He's going to reward us if we diligently seek Him. How do we diligently seek Jesus? How do we diligently seek God? Well, we put Him first in our lives. We go to God in prayer about everything. We don't make major decisions in our life without first praying about it and asking God to, to uh, that His will be done and, and all things that we do. And we diligently work and study. We diligently do good. We diligently do all that we can do to be the good Christian. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. If you are a Christian, you know you're a Christian, you have an assurance of salvation, you have assurance that God is going to reward you if you diligently do what He wants you to do. Uh, we must believe the message within the Bible, God's Word. Luke 13 and 3 tells us unless we repent, we're going to perish. So... Uh, What's that tell you? What's that mean to you? Unless you're sorry, unless you change your life, unless you do what God wants you to do, unless you're obedient to His words and become a child of God, you're going to perish. Uh, Peter told those who asked him in Acts chapter 2 about salvation, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember the eunuch? He acknowledged that Jesus was the Son of God. Uh, so now we can see the fundamentals of the faith. Faith in Christ first as the Son of God, not as a prophet, not as a, just a man. He, he was the Son of God. Uh, he wants us to turn from sin to uh, repentance. He wants us to be baptized for remission of sin. Uh, Mark 16 and 16 uh, says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. I look at that scripture and, and I think for, for most of my life I couldn't see uh, what was right in front of me. You know, I listen to other people. But in reading the scriptures, it's pretty clear. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Uh, why is it so hard for people to understand what God would have them to do? Uh, what should our relationship be with God? Knowing that we're a Christian, what should our relationship be? Well, Christ died for everyone. He died for all mankind, man and woman. Uh, but the thing is, each one of us can say that Jesus died for me personally. And that's what He did. He died for everyone. Do you think Jesus would have went to the cross if there was only ten people that needed Him to die for their sins? Yeah. 
If there was one person that needed him to die for their sins, he would have went to the cross. So he died for you personally. Uh, my relationship uh, to God is a matter of personal conviction. Uh, my relationship may be different than your relationship. You have different convictions than I do. Uh, and things in life that go on that are different with mine. It, what I'm saying is each one of us have a personal relationship with God and it is personal because he died for each and every one of us personally. He took that sin. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be the righteousness of God in him. He took our place. If we got what we deserved, we would get and go through what Jesus had to go through uh, here on this earth, and we'd be damned for all eternity. But unlike that, Jesus paid the price. He arose and sits on the right hand of God. He paved the way so that we, through Him, could have that assurance of salvation. Uh, there's only righteousness through Jesus Christ. Uh, he tasted death for, for every man, every woman. Uh, through His death, we become the righteousness of God through Jesus. He suffered for us. Uh, he was bruised uh, for our iniquities, for our sins, for our wrongdoings. We simply can't be thankful enough. I mean, we could thank God 24 hours a day for the rest of our life, and that could not be enough. Uh, why do people not realize that they need to, to be more thankful than they are uh, that God, Jesus took their place on the cross, paid for their sin? You know, remember the Passover? How that it was... Uh, last of the plague of Pharaoh and, and God said to Moses on a given night he's sending uh, the death angel to take uh, the first living man and animal and that for them to avoid that they must take a, a a lamb that's unblemished and they were to put the blood on the doorpost and the lentil and this death angel would pass by that house uh, he further instructed them to stay in the house uh, and when that angel saw the blood he would uh, the destroyer would not enter into that home not a single Israelite perished that night why they believed and they did what they were instructed to do. Uh, they obeyed God. Why do people not obey God today? Why do they not believe enough? Why are they not thankful enough to be obedient to God today the way those Israelites were there? Not a single one died in that plague. Isn't that pretty astounding that not one of those Israelites died in that Passover? Uh, we have a Passover. We do. As New Testament Christians, we, we have a Passover. Uh, we have an unblemished lamb that paid the price that shed his blood so that we don't have to stand for it. We don't have to stand up and take the punishment for it. 1 Corinthians 5 and uh, verse 7 says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The scripture names him Christ. He's our Passover. What a wonderful thing. You know, not an Israelite died. None of us have to die. Not a single person in the world today has to die. Spiritually. Not, not a person. It's been paid for. It's been bought. It's been taken care of. All we have to do is be obedient. The way those Israelites were on that night. God passes over our iniquities when we obey the gospel and are baptized because of the blood of His Son. 1 John 2 and 1 and 2 says, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And He is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 
We don't have an excuse not to believe and be obedient, not to have an assurance of salvation. God has provided, He's done everything, everything that He needs to do, just like He did it for those uh, Israelites. He done everything. They obeyed that night. We need to be obedient as, as mankind today. Uh, It's terrible that people don't take advantage of what God has so preciously put into place. Um, anyone can take advantage of it by becoming a Christian. Uh, 1 John 1 and, and verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. You know, you can't open the New Testament without looking at scriptures like this and seeing that from the very beginning, all God wanted was for mankind to be with Him forever. And all He's asking is for mankind to be repentful for the life that we live and be obedient to Him and, and be in heaven with Him for all eternity. Uh, you can know that you have the assurance of salvation. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to guess. Uh, when you walk with the Lord, you know that you have salvation. It's not a guessing game. He tells us you have salvation. You can be assured of it. Uh, Luke 19 and verse 10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. I'm glad He did. Because without Him, we'd all be lost. Without Him, none of us would have hope of heaven. Uh, and the reason is because we have sin in our lives. Uh, we're imperfect, but we should endeavor to walk in the light because He's instructed us to do that. And as long as we do that to the best of our ability and stay faithful to Him, we have an assurance of salvation. Uh, it's a continuing process. It's not just a one-time deal. It's not walking down the aisle and getting baptized and that's the end of it. You have to live your life while you're here on this earth. It's a continuation of life. It's a process that continues as long as we're on this uh, earth. Peter says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory now and forever. Um, even though we're imperfect, what did Jesus do when He came? He didn't come and, and kill everybody that was unperfect. He uh, came and condemned sin. Uh, John 10 and 27 and 28 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. That's assurance of salvation. If you're one of His sheep, if you're a Christian, if you've done the things that God wants you to do to become His child, His sheep, you've got salvation. No one can take you from it. It's between you and God. And that's assurance. And you can rest assured that uh, you're saved when you walk with the Lord, when you do what God wants you to do. You know, we all have weaknesses. Uh, we all have difficulties. We all have temptations of, of certain different things. But the point I'm getting at is that we're all sinners. We're all sinners because we're imperfect. Uh, we're just forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, he came to do that very thing. He came to give us an opportunity to have our sins washed away. Luke 19 and 10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. He not only came, He came to seek, to look for the people that were in need spiritually to be saved. He sought them out. We have it right here in front of us. We have that assurance. All we have to do is be obedient to it. Uh, if there were no assurances in the grace of God and no guarantees of, of salvation through Christ, what value would His Word hold if there was no assurances? It wouldn't hold any value, would it? It'd just be another book. 
but it has all the assurance that we need. Uh, it's a great assurance for the Christian. Uh, we need to put our trust in God. Ephesians 2 and, and 8 says, For by, the, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Certainly we couldn't do it by ourselves, because if we could, then Jesus came and died and suffered for absolutely nothing. We can't do it by ourselves. We need God. We need Jesus. We need His blood to wash away our sins. Christ died for sin, but on the third day He was raised, and in doing that, He delivered a fatal blow to Satan. You know, Satan still walks to and fro, and I'm assured of that in the Bible, that he walks around uh, seeking whom he may devour. And he uses all sorts of different devices in the world today to try to tempt people uh, away from God. But Jesus was raised from the dead. He overcome death as the first fruits of the resurrection to show without a doubt that if we follow him and we do what he commands us to do, we will do the same thing. We'll overcome death and live with him forever. Hebrews chapter 2, 14 and 15 says, For as, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Think about it. What's the biggest fear and concern of sinful man, sinful mankind? I think one of the biggest concerns here physically that we have in this life is death. And many people fear death and they don't like to talk about death. Uh, but you know what? I believe wholeheartedly that death is the very beginning of eternity and it's going to be one place or the other when we leave this world when we physically die eternity will begin uh, you can't change anything once you leave this world sometimes we forget names and places and phone numbers uh, that's limitations of course of, of our fleshly bodies our fleshly minds but when we put this flesh off, being made in the image and likeness of God, we'll be perfected. When we leave this world, it's but a doorway into the next. And I know it's scary for a lot of people, but it shouldn't be scary for the Christian that has assurance of, of eternal life. Because you're going through a doorway to something better. Jesus died to remove that fear of death from his followers. Uh, the brethren at Thessalonica were concerned about those that had passed on, that they were going to miss out on the promises that had been preached to them that, that God had given. But you know what? They were uh, told that they weren't going to be at a disadvantage. In fact, they were going to be the first fruits of the resurrection. That when Jesus returned in the air, that the dead in Christ would be the ones that rose first to meet him in the air. So no one's going to be left out. No one's going to miss. Uh, for the faithful Christian in this life here, it's not goodbye when we die. It's not goodbye at all. Uh, Christ died so we might have life. So uh, we're going to have the same thing. We're going to have life. Uh, our hope is that everyone would understand that there's only two places to go. Uh, heaven or hell. That's the reality of it. Uh, we can make a change while we're still here. We can't make a change once we leave. Uh, Paul didn't say in Philippians 1 and 21, for me to live in Christ, to die is gain. He knew that it was better to go on and die. But he knew for the benefit of the other people that had not yet obeyed the gospel, it was more needful for him to stay. But he didn't say, I don't think it's a bad thing to die. He knew, uh, it says, for me to live in is Christ and to die is gain. He knew that it was better and that it was going to be an eternal life waiting on him when he died. Uh, to die is what? 
If you're a Christian, to die is gain. It's going to be better than this world. It's going to be much better than what we're used to and accustomed to here. Most people live their lives in a materialistic way because that's what this life and that's what this earth is all about. Assuming that that's all life is, is what you have while you're here. You know, everybody wants to have everything they can because it's all the time that you've got. Get it while you can. But there's things that are more important. What you better do is make preparations to live forever. A lot of people don't make preparations to live forever. They want to have what they have right now. Uh, get it while you can. Enjoy it while you're here. Because when you die, there's nothing. But there is. We, we need to be getting ready to live forever, not getting ready to die. Dying is just a doorway into forever. Uh, this life is brief. You know, James says it's but a vapor, and we use that a lot at funerals. It appears and fadeth away for a short time, and it certainly is. You know, anyone in here that has a little age on them knows that, wow, it's just the other day when you were growing up and going to school and doing the things when, as a child, and now you look around and you're old and gray and life's and end of life is or in the last part of your life's knocking on the door you know it's like a vapor it happens very quick uh, but this doorway this doorway of death that we're going to experience in this physical world is just a doorway to a better place to a better relationship with god you know if we think we have a good relationship with god now whoa what kind of relationship are we going to have with him in his kingdom forever and ever uh you can be assured that you have salvation when you're faithful and you walk with the Lord. Romans 4 and 8 uh, says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. There's not going to be any sin in heaven. You know, we're going to have such a wonderful life in heaven. Uh, what kind of man is it that the Lord will not reckon the guilt of sin well it's the man or woman whose sins are covered by the blood of christ it's the man or woman who's a christian that's obeyed the gospel that's going to to be in heaven and has the assurance of being heaven it's the christian that's walking in the light in their daily lives while they're living here on the, on this earth it's not a matter of being perfect but our goals should be to strive in that direction uh, we need to to read god's word to study it uh know its content, know its instructions, know what the gospel means to us so that we can share it with others. Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, but sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. What's that scripture say? What's it tell us? A man clothed in flesh, a man with all the d drives and urges that, that we possess uh, today, a man with all the weaknesses and limitations that we have today, but he loves the Lord and thinks about keeping God's word day and night. He's being obedient to God and all of his commands. Uh, in this Christian age, the blood of, of Christ continually covers us. If we're a Christian and we're striving to live that faithful Christian life, we can go to God every single day. It covers every transgression that we might uh, do in our lives. Uh, put your trust in Christ. Walk closely with Him. Read and study His Word. Uh, put the principles of His Word in practice in your life every day. Uh, assurance is ours. Based on the basis of our faith. Do we believe the Word of God? If we believe it, then we have an assurance of salvation. If we believe it and we're obedient to it. Uh, do you want the happiness and, and the joy and the security of, of knowing that you have a home in heaven uh, forever? If you really believe that God loved you enough to sacrifice His, His Son and that Christ took Him on Himself, uh, the pain the death, the shedding of His blood for each and every one of us personally. He done it for a reason. 
so that we could have forgiveness and have the assurance of heaven. He brought about the gospel. Uh, he wanted to set us free. You know, the Bible says the truth will set you free. That's what Jesus did with the truth, with the gospel. He wants to set us free. Free from what? Free from the bondage of sin. Free from this world to an assurance of a home in heaven forever. All you have to do is believe that, have the faith in it, and be obedient to the words of God. Are you a Christian tonight? Have you done what God says for you to do to become a Christian? Do you know? Do you have assurance that you're going to be in heaven? Have a repentant heart. Uh, confess Christ as the Son of God. Be baptized for the remission of sins. You know, it, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty clear. If you read the Bible and, and you have an open heart and an open mind when you're doing it and put out all the preconceived ideas that you've heard and been told uh, by other people in your life, go to the Bible. Go to God's Word. Check it out. It will enlighten.